The iceberg is a conceptual tier list of knowledge, with surface level information on a game or community at the tip of the iceberg, and the most obscure information at the very bottom in the abyss. I'm not Harv, and today we will be taking a deep dive into the Destiny Iceberg. Over the last few months, games like Mario 64, Minecraft, and Pokemon have all received their own icebergs, as well as videos by various creators explaining them. I was inspired to create this video by Retro Gaming Now and Mishkaz, so I recommend you check them out after this video if you haven't already. Destiny actually has many icebergs, and rather than explaining just one, I thought it would be better to merge a multitude of them into one comprehensive list. On top of that, I have also rearranged some entries and included quite a few of my own. Another thing to note, I decided to exclude some entries because I found that not every entry was as interesting or worth researching as others. If there are any entries that I gloss over that you think I should have talked about, leave a comment and I may just make another video. A lot of these entries assume you are already in the Destiny community and have been for a while, so in my analysis I'll make sure to give proper context to these entries so if you're either new to Destiny or just a viewer who's never played, you won't be totally left in the dark. Credit to user slash inflatable waffle and user slash lemons are just lemons on reddit for their original icebergs. The Loot Cave in Destiny 1, players could travel to Skywatch on the Cosmodrome and continuously farm an infinitely spawning group of hive that emerged from a cave. They would often drop engrams, which at the time were much more valuable compared to now, since the average player would rarely get a legendary engram naturally. In the early weeks of Destiny, full lobbies of players on patrol would camp outside the cave and dance with fellow guardians. Bungie eventually patched the loot cave and left an easter egg in its place, poking fun at the Cryptarch and the amount of hive that the players killed. Ethernet Cable Unplug Glitch In the raid Crota's End from Destiny 1, if the fire team leader unplugged their ethernet cable as Crota knelt for damage phase, he would not get back up, allowing the sword bearer unlimited time to damage Crota. All the host had to do was join back at the very end to receive loot. Randall the Vandal, the most infamous recurring character in Destiny, a bug caused a Reaver Vandal to be incredibly overpowered in the Forgotten Shore on the Cosmodrome in Destiny 1. Players could fight Randall and eventually kill him, but due to his insane amount of health, he became a true challenge. He was transferred to become Randall the Perfected, a Splicer Vandal in the Wrath of the Machine raid. Then he was brought back as a House of Dusk Vandal in the Sunken Isles at the EDZ in D2, where he would occasionally be slightly stronger than a regular Vandal. Randall was revived in Beyond Light on the Cosmodrome, with mini-boss status and two new bullet sponge shanks as companions. The E3 2013 Destiny Reveal A glimpse at the original story of Destiny, which was lost after a poorly received test screening with Activision, caused rewrites to the whole story. It's a very interesting watch if you have played Destiny 1 or know what it was like. Halo 3 ODST Easter Egg During firefight games on Halo 3 ODST, you can find a poster that says Destiny Awaits and shows a picture of Earth and what seems like the Traveler. This was in 2009, showing that Bungie worked on Destiny 1 at least 5 years prior to its release, and were already ramping up to leave Microsoft before Halo Reach even launched. Cade 7 Since the idea of Cade's death happening began floating around the Destiny community before Forsaken, people have wondered if he could return as a rebooted Exo named Cade 7. This is definitely not going to happen since this isn't actually how Exos work. Urzok the Hated Similar to Randall the Vandal, Urzok the Hated was a mini-boss that existed in Destiny 1. He would occasionally spawn in the Skywatch on the Cosmodrome, and was a high health enemy that was difficult to kill. He would sometimes spawn when the enemies would move against each other, so while you fought the Hive and Urzok, the Fallen would start attacking as well, leading to a huge firefight. The Books of Sorrow The Books of Sorrow is a set of Destiny lore from the Taken King. The books detail the birth of the Hive from Oryx, the Taken King's perspective. Titan Sea Monster. This is an easter egg on Titan where you could view a sea monster in Titan's methane ocean. You could see its body well in the rig and its silhouette well in the bottom of the arcology. You just never quit, do you? Destiny 2's vendors from year 1 all have repetitive voice lines, and for one reason or another, many of the vendors still say the same things today. The most famous example is Hawthorne's monologue in which she says, You just never quit, do you? Took out Gaul, woke up the Traveler, and now half of what I hear in the streets is how much you and your clan are making a difference. And that's why I started this whole clan thing in the first place. People are still waiting for the Vanguard to lead the way. It's time for a change, and guardians like you are making it happen. No pressure. 
This line has since been removed in season 13. Spare the captain. During an adventure on Titan, you track a band of fallen thieves. When you reach the end of the mission, there is a hive knight battling a fallen captain named Mithrax the Forsaken. If you kill the knight, the captain will acknowledge you and then leave you with the stolen goods. Mithrax becomes an important character later in D2 and was the quest giver for the Zero Hour exotic mission. The Rock if you go into the Cosmodrome, you can see a giant bird flying in the sky. This is pretty well known as a rock. And with that, we are finished with the tip of the iceberg. Overall, I think that everything here should be pretty well known to anyone who has played Destiny in the last couple years. I think this tier had the most things that I added to it, but like I said in the intro, most of the icebergs start with stuff that is already way too obscure. Anyway, now we are on to the surface level. Rasputin attacked the Traveler. People have theorized that the Traveler was so heavily damaged because in an attempt to save humanity, the Warmind fired upon the orb, immobilizing it and forcing it to create ghosts, who then revive the guardians who protect humanity. I think this theory is very plausible. Fifteenth Wish does not exist. The Fifteenth Wish has been sought after for years at this point, ever since the last Wish raid. There is probably no Fifteenth Wish, since at this point it would have been data mined or have been unveiled in some other way. Despite my theory though, the flavor text for it has been found in the database, which it says, this one you shall cherish. I personally still think it's never going to be found. Pyramid Ships I'm only including this one because in Destiny 1, it was still speculated that a piece of concept art depicting ships shaped like pyramids glassing a planet were going to enter the game as the true form of the darkness, which ended up being true, just not in Destiny 1. Vanguard Aldrin In Forsaken, Prince Aldrin killed Cade then got killed by our guardian and Petra. He then came back as a guardian, making him eligible to be the next Hunter Vanguard. Based on the story of season 12 and 13, I have confidence he will fill a similar role in the tower. AFK Forges This refers to Bungie's consistent failure to patch the Black Armory Forge AFK exploit that existed until the Umbral Engram fiasco of season 11. Streamer Loot the phenomenon in which streamers sometimes get incredibly lucky drops while on stream, and thus are considered to be getting special treatment by Bungie. This is just one big inside joke within the community. Zol is still alive. After his demise in the Warmind campaign, the Worm God Zol's essence became the Taken version of the Black Hammer sniper rifle known as Whisper of the Worm. His voice can be heard during the Whisper mission that takes place on Io. Winnower Raid Boss A huge quote-unquote leak of the Fall 2020 DLC titled Destiny 2 Collapse surfaced on 4chan in about March of 2020. It described an enemy known as the Winnower, who would be the Raid Boss. This refers to the statue seen in the Beyond Shadowkeep mission and Garden of Salvation raid. This leak was confirmed fake by the unveiling of Beyond Light in June of 2020. SRL Seasonal Event This sounds like a theory that Sparrow Racing League would be returning as some kind of seasonal event most likely with Guardian Games. This was debunked by Guardian Games 2020 and Luke Smith saying that they could make 2-3 to three strikes with the resources used to make just one SRL course. Shax x Mara In a lore card, Lord Shax, the Crucible Handler, was summoned by Marasov, Queen of the Awoken, where Shax read William Shakespeare's The Tempest from Memory, and then it is implied that they hooked up. I think someone on the writing team at Bungie had a little too much time on their hands if you ask me. Black Tier Loot A heavily rumored loot rarity, one above exotics. The theory of its existence circulated in Destiny 1 vanilla, but it never existed. Siva on the Exodus Black A specific lore card confirms that the Exodus Black was carrying Siva with it when the collapse caused it to crash onto Nessus. Twab Cats Authors of the This Week at Bungie blog occasionally sneak in photos of their cats that can be found hidden in the post. No PvP team. This could be a reference to the remote theory that Destiny's Crucible does not actually contain real players, but is made up of AI that simulates players. This theory is definitely false. While some mobile games can pull this off, Destiny is too complicated for this to work. The Veil The rumored fifth race from Destiny 1, where the races initially only consisted of the Cabal, Hive, Vex, and Fallen. Due to concept art, people believe the Veil were going to be the physical form of the darkness. I believe that they likely ended up as the Taken, but I still hope we see a version of the darkness as an enemy race in the future. So that wraps up the second tier of our iceberg. I think that this tier was pretty solid as far as the balance between general knowledge and obscure topics goes. It was a shorter tier, but we've still got a long way down to go, and this next level is one of the longest. I hope you're enjoying the video so far, and have maybe learned something new about Destiny. Without further ado, let's continue into the shallow water.
Master Chief is a Guardian. My personal favorite easter egg in Destiny, I'll play a clip from the Taken King mission in which you locate Cade's stash, where you can interact with a cryopod containing the easter egg. Pod number 10201. A Guardian with exceptional light sealed himself inside. He's been in there for centuries. Before I found you, I tried to resurrect him, but he preferred to sleep. He said the last war was enough for a thousand lifetimes. Ginzor knows 15th Wish. Ginzor is a well-known data miner in the Destiny community. He has leaked just about every quest in recent memory, Traveler's Chosen, Ruinous Effigy, and Felwinter's Lie. Sometimes, he shows restraint in unveiling leaks, allowing natural discovery. Considering his prowess in leaking and data mining, if anyone knows what the 15th wish really is, it's probably Ginzor. Warmind Retcon In Destiny 1 Vanilla, it was largely believed that Rasputin was the Warmind of Earth, and others existed on external planets like Charlemagne on Mars. Rise of Iron and the Warmind DLC retconned this, explaining that the Warmind on Earth was a rogue sect of the main Rasputin that lived on Mars. Scabretti Scabretti was a theorized submind of Rasputin similar to Charlemagne. The theory of its existence is less credible though, due to no idea of its location and there being no historical figure with the name Scabretti. Oddly enough though, in the credits of Destiny 2, the name Scabretti is listed and even has a voice actor attached, meaning there are potentially lines recorded. I think I will be making a standalone video about Scabretti, Charlemagne, and this entire lost story surrounding the Warmind in the future after I do a lot more research. Bad luck protection. This refers to the system that Bungie claimed to have implemented back in 2018 that would help players obtain items like Niflheim Frost, Braytech Winterwolf, Braytech Osprey, and the Escalation Protocol gear with less duplicates. These changes were only noticeably implemented during Shadowkeep and Seasons 9 through 11. Dreadnought Fly-In Glitch There's a strange glitch where you enter the Dreadnought Arrival animation while joining the Deathless Heroic Adventure on Titan. It plays the Taken King music and shows Saturn as well as the Dreadnought. Three four seven Vesta Dynasty, an exotic scout rifle that was rumored to exist during the House of Wolves expansion when it was data mined. Players eventually determined that it was not in the game during House of Wolves. It wasn't obtainable until the Taken King expansion, and its real name was Boolean Gemini. Widow's Court Cat. On the Crucible map Widow's Court, a small tabby cat will occasionally jump onto the dashboard of a red truck near lower spawn. Zavala with hair. There's an old picture of Zavala with hair from a Destiny 1 art book. The Basketball Court of Oryx, a painful chapter in the Destiny community's history. R slash Raid Secrets uncovered a mystery within the King's Fall jumping puzzle. A door was open and it led to a room where you could dunk an orb or relic into a thrall statue or hoop. For days, people with the patience to unlock the room searched high and low to uncover a hidden secret. Players and Raid Secrets members were trying different patterns, timings, and combinations. They were ravenous to find a new chest, a new encounter, or just some kind of deeper meaning. Unfortunately, there was none to be found. After a long weekend of searching, director Luke Smith made a Twitter post stating that the end of the puzzle was with the basketball court. This was a blow to the easter egg hunting community, because this was one of the biggest discoveries since the final vault of glass just earlier that year, and hearing that the puzzle ended with a simple, fun easter egg was upsetting for a lot of people. Drifter killed Cade. This theory states that it is possible that because the ghost of Cade 6 was destroyed by the rifleman using a hive-like bullet, the Drifter, who ran with the Shadows of Yore, a fanatic group that follows the Wielder of Thorn, could have supplied the Scorn with such armaments. This theory is probably false, but I do remember there being some kind of lore that connects the Drifter to the Scorn Barons, so my best guess is yours. Stardust Back in Season 10, a foreign Destiny 2 social media page posted a media file with the words Stardust Tease attached. Players thought this meant that the 2020 Fall DLC would be called Stardust. A few weeks later, Beyond Light was unveiled. Stardust was definitely just a codename for Beyond Light. XP Throttling This was a controversy in which Bungie secretly began throttling the amount of experience players in Destiny 2 Vanilla would be able to obtain as to promote Bright and Grim sales, which were awarded for leveling up. Anon the Nine, a well-known leaker who predicted much of the season of opulence as well as the location of Europa. They were largely wrong in their final leak though, which predicted that Destiny 3 would come instead of Beyond Light, and that Destiny 2 Year 3 would return to Venus rather than Earth's moon. Gods of Mars 
This entry is really cool. According to an article by Forbes, the supposed second DLC of Destiny 2 would be called the Gods of Mars and is described as follows. Destiny 2 Expansion 2 Gods of Mars sends your guardian on a long journey to find a brand new destination, the Frigid Vale of Mars, with an array of new missions, adventures, and enemies to fight. Charlemagne has reawoken on Mars and has imprisoned Rasputin within an ancient vault. Work with the elusive Anna Bray, long thought to be dead, in order to combat Charlemagne's remnants, free Rasputin, and uncover the secrets of Clovis Bray. If this leak is real, it was likely from incredibly early on in the development cycle of the Warmind DLC, but I personally don't believe it because the likelihood of Bungie adding a new race of Exos in a Spring DLC is very low. Also, by this point, they had decided that Rasputin was the one and only Warmind, and that means Charlemagne really does not exist. The Architects Whenever you die to fall damage, falling off the map, being slammed into a wall, or being smashed against the ground by a phalanx, you get a message saying that you were killed by the architects. Back in my day, when I was about 12 in Destiny 1 vanilla, my friends and I assumed that the architects were some almighty creators who built the Destiny universe, but in all reality, it's just a meta joke by Bungie, saying that whoever built the building killed you, or that every time Bungie's physics engine kills you, the developer is the architects. Corridors of Time Sword I was kind of dormant during the Season of Dawn, but this is what I've gathered about the sword and the corridors of time. In the corridors, you come across a tomb that is sealed by a sword and a ghost shell. The problem is that we never got this exact sword. It's very similar to the one you received for defeating Oryx during the story of the Taken King, but it is not identical to any of the edge swords Shax gives you afterwards. Siva Microwave I, uh, I think I'll let you research this one at your own risk. It was a little much. Vault of Glass Whisper Portal Within a Destiny 1 Vault of Glass jumping puzzle, there is a visible portal off in the far left side of the room. This portal is most likely connected to the one that exists in the Whisper mission on Heroic, which looks into the Vault of Glass. Also, the same oracles in Vault of Glass appear inside the Whisper mission on Heroic. And that marks the end of our third tier. I did a lot of rearranging when it came to this tier, so I hope you felt that everything was appropriately placed. If there's anything that you may want to know more about that I glossed over, be sure to let me know with a comment. Now, let's move on to another long tier, the middle of the iceberg. Aramis is not dead. In the Salvation's Downfall quest, you can hear Critis, one of Aramis's fallen lieutenants, saying to her supporters that Aramis can be freed if they are able to unseal the stasis that the player traps her in at the end of the Kell of Darkness mission. Considering that Aramis is unable to be shattered and was alive when she was frozen, it is possible that Aramis is not dead but was actually frozen in cryostasis and would be woken up if unfrozen. Exotech Angel Hunter. This was the original Destiny 1 name for Celestial Nighthawk when it was still in the database from 2014 to May 2015. Teox is still alive. In a Destiny 1 PvP map called The Dungeons, there was what seemed to be a wizard trapped inside a large crystal at the center of the map. People think this is Teox, a member of the Krill species, and someone who betrayed and then was trapped by Oryx. Teox is a Krill. They only lived for about 10 years, and the events of the Books of Sorrow took place 2400 years ago, so the crystal is theorized to have kept her in stasis, preventing her from aging. Fractaline Insider Trading A reference to the crippling of the Fractaline market that happened around Destiny 2 Season of Dawn. The Guardians of the Tower fell upon hard times as they had dumped all their glimmer and materials into the intangible Fractaline market that disappeared overnight. Uh, jokes aside, this is a reference to the massive dump of Fractaline that the community had to force during the Empyrean Foundation community event during Season of Dawn. Some people treated it like their guardians had invested huge sums of their wealth into a pump and dump scheme and lost everything. Europa Before its announcement as a real location in Destiny 2, Europa was the stuff of myth for Destiny 1 players simply because of some concept art early in the game's life cycle. Shin Melfur is Dredgen Vale an interesting lore bit, Shin Malfur, the man who killed Dredgen Yor, used an alter ego called Dredgen Vale so he could infiltrate the shadows of Yor. If I'm not mistaken, Dredgen Vale is the guardian seen wielding Thorn in the season of the Drifter intro cutscene. The Kentark Three. A story about some early darkness guardians is detailed throughout the flavor text of the Garden of Salvation gear. The three encountered the darkness in some form while navigating a Vex network, possibly the Black Garden. 
Owl Sector, one of Bungie's classic ARGs. It included a secret room on Mars, strange particles, and a literal infection of nanites that could be spread from player to player. It was a prelude to Rise of Iron, and seeded the idea of Siva and Clovis Bray's creation of it. Savathun Leitmotif one of my personal favorites, a huge piece of Destiny 2's lore with chilling implications. In the mission from Season of Dawn, where you collect the Devil's Ruin sidearm, Lord Shax sings a song for Saint-14. In Season of Arrivals, dialogue between Drifter and Eris reveals that the tune Shax sings in the Devil's Ruin quest is known as a viral chant. It's a leitmotif of Sevathun, and once it is heard, it cannot be forgotten or unheard. I'll play the voice line now. Hey, three eyes. Shax says you sang him a little ditty. What? Shax, Chunky Titan, One Horn. Did you sing him a song on the moon? What a senseless question. Yeah, I didn't think so. Stay off this channel. Should I need you, I'll call. Wait. Uh, I didn't hang up. Does that oaf still keep that skull with him? In the tower? Yeah, hangs it over his spot. I wouldn't have tangled with that thing. Desperate times. This little ditty. Did it go? <laughs> that would be the one. <laughs> what is it? Sabathun's song. It's a viral chant. It can never be unheard. Now that Savathun has announced herself, relics of the dark across the system have begun to awaken. Tell Shax to remove that skull immediately. Sister, I already tried. What did that oaf say? No. You can also occasionally hear Crow humming it in the helm during Season of the Chosen. Even more disturbing is that this viral chant is also the same theme that plays as the main title music of the Shadowkeep DLC, which means that we are also infected with the viral chant just for playing the game. Ambient Cabal Screams, an easter egg that occurred during the Season of Opulence where due to the Crown of Sorrow being placed on the boss Galron's head, the Cabal could be heard screaming via ambient sounds throughout the locations occupied by the Cabal. Medusa and Baru. This one is a lot to talk about, so I will need to break it down with some beginner info. Coria is a taken Vex Hydra that entered Oryx's throne world when his son Crota accidentally led the Vex inside. Oryx defeated the Vex, and in the process, took their mind called Coria. He gave the taken Vex as a gift to Savathun, meant to allow him to monitor her. Savathun saw through the trick, and modified Coria to allow it to be the vessel which Savathun can control the taken. Now for Medusa and Baru. Basically, Medusa is a way for Coria to communicate with the Guardians to instruct them how to break the cycle of the three-week Dreaming City curse. What they say is lies, though, because they tell us to continue to feed into the loop and use it to finally destroy Dolan Karu at light level 999, which would end the Dreaming City curse cycle. But really, the cycle is a means of Savathun to gain power and a way for her to possibly gain passage to the Distributary the birthplace of the Awoken, where she can gain enough, quote, tribute or sustenance to live millions of years without needing to follow the sword logic like Oryx. Bungie has some great writers, and it is a shame that a lot of this fascinating lore and story work is never seen in the campaigns. Truth to Power slash 999 Light Shattered Throne. This one is directly tied to the last entry. The Truth to Power lore book told players to kill Dolan Karu in the Shattered Throne dungeon at 999 Light to end the curse on the Dreaming City. This was Savathun, so she was lying, but at the time, players really thought this could be the way to unlock the end of the curse on the Dreaming City, or maybe even unlock the 15th wish. Bungie should have been much more transparent though, because after a year and a half of waiting for players to be of light to complete this, it turned out that nothing happened. Players were upset, but I think if it had been made more clear to the community that Savathun was the one telling us this information, and she was also the one who would lose if the curse was broken, then I think people would have not reacted so poorly. Ghost Fragments Ghost Possibly the most thought-provoking of any Grimoire card, it seems to reference some kind of external plane, maybe the extra-dimensional space that the Traveler came from, or where the true source of the light resides. It's told from the perspective of a ghost trying to recollect what it was like before the Traveler created them. Unused Locations and Cutscenes Destiny 1 is notorious for having unused locations as well as cutscenes. One such cutscene is this crow cutscene. Another location is the EDZ, which was meant to appear in Destiny 1 but was saved for Destiny 2 Vanilla. Wu Ming 
Mandarin for no name, this is also the name that the Drifter went by in the Dark Ages. The Emissary of the Nine also refers to him as Germain. As a footnote, the Drifter has also been called Rat, Drifter, Todd, Dredgen Hope, Eli, Germain, Wu Ming, Rogue Lightbearer, and VIP 1315. Felwinter is the only non-human Iron Lord. The original entry states that he is the only non-human guardian, but I'm fairly certain that this was a typo. Pretty self-explanatory, Felwinter is the only Iron Lord we know out of the main nine that wasn't an Awoken or a human. The Stranger's Ghost, an odd fish ghost looking thing that we still don't know what it is. I don't know if we'll ever hear about this thing ever again, but all we know is that it is not a ghost. Animal Companions In very early Destiny concept art, we can see a tiger standing next to an early visual of a guardian. Back before Destiny 1, this made people think that players would be able to have an animal as a companion in the game. This turned out to be false, and the idea of animal companions in Destiny was forgotten about by many players. Pet Warbeast This is a similar theory about companion animals. When players saw a Cabal Warbeast in the Destiny 2 cinematic trailer, they speculated that a Warbeast would be available as a possible pet in-game. This turned out to be false. Scrapped Parade Intro I couldn't find anything about a parade, but what I did find was a very different version of the actual intro to Destiny 2 that we got, in the form of a storyboard animatic. So this animatic kind of shows this like weird harbinger of the Traveler, it would seem. And it, overall, it's just crazy and just like so strange and over the top. I couldn't honestly imagine this being in the original game in the way that it launched, but just kind of like the scrap story that I'll go into uh, for Destiny 1, I'll talk about a little bit further down. Uh, so much of Destiny was changed in these early days. 7. 7 is known as the Bungie number. July 7th is Bungie Day, 7 is a motif throughout Bungie's games, and Year 7 of Destiny is the one that we are currently in. Disco Room The room I believe that this entry is referring to is the one where you can play the Paul McCartney song and visit a bar. I don't remember when this room opened, but you can find it in Destiny 1 beneath Amanda Holiday's platform. Another easter egg with this room is that in the Zero Hour mission in Destiny 2, if you walk to the door of the disco room, it is slightly opened and you can hear the Paul McCartney song playing distantly. The fact that the door is actually closed leads me to believe that some civilians probably used it as a safe room during the Red Legion's assault on the tower, and never escaped because the door was either stuck or damaged, so they either are still in there and listening to Paul McCartney, or they eventually starved to death. Good job on the rescue efforts, Zavala. Enceladus in the mission where you acquire the notes of Cade Six's will, you have to open each of his caches that are hidden on Titan. In the audio log, where Cade talks to Petra, he says, Oh, and tell Paladin Orin, if the sun over Nessus escapes Nebula Cycle, evac labor after dawn. Which, if decoded by taking the first letter of each word, it spells out, It's on Enceladus. This was believed at the time to be the location of the Deep Stone Crypt. But since the launch of Beyond Light, we now know that it is not on Enceladus, but is on Europa. What is actually on Enceladus, we may never know. The Red Box The Red Box is a lore tab, which is about the time when a Cryptarch asks Zer 
about a small red box that they found on Venus, containing dust and geological maps of multiple planets, including ones that are similar to Earth, but are far away in the galaxy. This entry may also refer to the multiple red boxes that are found on Venus that look very similar to the real-life red box. The Fate of All Fools, a scout rifle that was given to a Destiny player who had to undergo multiple surgeries. Fate of All Fools was the first version of the Jade Rabbit, which has the same exact perks. The Fate of All Fools remains as the only gun exclusively owned by one single player. Callus is a Scion. Emperor Callus of the Cabal is the final boss of the Leviathan and is depicted to be the same race as the Legionaries, but when you defeat him, he is shown to be nothing more than a robotic effigy of him. This theory states that what we see in the Leviathan is a fake look for Callus, and Callus is actually a powerful scion much like Atsat or Inatum. This theory is likely false because in Season 13, we get a good look at Keitel, the daughter of Callus, in-game and she is the same race as the Legionaries, Centurions, and Phalanxes. So unless she is also a robot being piloted by a hidden Scion, this theory is likely false. The Myriad In a Nessus adventure, Failsafe talks about how while she was trapped during the adventure, she discussed the myriad of infinite possibilities with someone who she doesn't specify, leading Reddit user slash Fiddytox to make a post questioning what the Myriad may be. Another user replied by stating that the Myriad was the name for Nessus while the game was in development, so no new location or anything like that. What happened to Siva? This entry asks why we no longer see any Siva in Destiny, and I think user slash the full bladder explains it best. In the Rise of Iron story missions, we destroy the Siva replication chamber, so the devils couldn't make any more Siva. This leads to the Wrath of the Machine raid with the devils sending out a broadcast that says any fallen who brought a scrap of remaining SIVA would be brought into the Splicer's ranks. When Axis Archon Prime was destroyed, the majority of the remaining SIVA which had already been used in Splicer experiments was destroyed with him. Some Splicer remnants remain, and the devils recently made a move trying to steal the last operational SIVA replication chamber, the outbreak perfected. EAZ was a vision. The European Aerial Zone is the Solstice of Heroes activity location. According to Evil Avante, it came to her in a dream, and it was created by the disciples of Ikora Ray, the Hidden. One theory is that it was the Hidden's response to Gambit, where they could watch Guardians fight using the light instead of using motes of dark like in Gambit. Forge of Gods This was a real blast from the past. Destiny 1 vanilla players will distinctly remember this picture. This was the original roadmap for all of Destiny 1's content. Two small DLCs, Vex Void and Forge of Gods, were supposed to act as follow-ups to the Taken King, or Comet as this roadmap refers to it as. If you played it all during the Taken King, you know that Year 2 of Destiny 1 was the longest content drought in the game's history, so we definitely did not get those two DLCs. Why or when they were cut is still unknown. I personally would have really enjoyed some more content during Year 2, but I was pretty satisfied by the April update. So that concludes the middle of the iceberg. For those of you still watching, thank you very much. So far, the writing, recording, and editing process has taken quite a lot of time, so if you are enjoying, make sure to leave a like or a comment about your thoughts thus far. We are nearing the abyss, and down there, we have some really interesting stuff to talk about, including some unnerving lore and really crazy details found in the game. Without further ado, let's descend to the bottom of the iceberg. Guardians Stuck on the Almighty In one of the Ghost Stories lore entries, a ghost talks about their guardian, who has been trapped on the Almighty in some kind of vex or temporal anomaly, and is frozen in time. He is not able to be saved by his ghost because he is neither dead or revivable. This card is from before Season of the Worthy, so it is likely that this guardian died when Rasputin destroyed the Almighty, but I don't think the ghost was able to find him since he would be probably lost in the middle of space and turned into ash. Cyrell, the Ghost Hunter Rather than give my own explanation, I will read the Lord tab from Ghost Stories that is connected to this entry. The speaker's warnings were clear. Always mind the light. If you feel it fraying, you've strayed too far. There are places even the Traveler's Light cannot reach. Now here I am, lost in the shadowy pastiche known as the Reef, and not a single tether of the light touches me, but that, 
that is what my guardian wanted. His name is Cyrell, and Cyrell called me Strain. I found him on the far edges of Mercury, in a valley that the Vex transformation had never reached. He seemed resilient, unwavering, old, and wise. I'd searched so long for my better half that I didn't hesitate. If I had considered but one moment more, I might have sensed how tired and burdened and tangled his soul truly was, and I would have left him in peace, and I would not be a murderer of my own kin. Cyrell told me we had came to the reef in search of the Awoken. He had heard stories of how this far-flung offshoot of humanity had returned to soul with unparalleled knowledge. He believed they had the answer to a question he refused to share. I now know, however, that he really came here to spare me. He confessed he could not bear another battle, nor fight in the name of something no one could possibly understand. Though he could not remember his past, he knew deep down that he had already fought his last war. He couldn't kill me. I was his friend. He doesn't kill friends. He wouldn't kill himself, either. That was cowardly, weak, and if the ghost's sole purpose was to raise the dead to kill in the name of unexplainable forces, he could no longer let that happen. He would end the cycle. He would spare his brothers and sisters in arms. He would let the dead rest. Years later, I saw Cyrell again, clad in wretched-looking armor, dragging a chain of dead ghosts in the name of peace, still searching for an Awoken who could answer the one question that has haunted him since rebirth. If you are a ghost who has not yet found your chosen, let this be a warning. Cyrell, the ghost hunter, will end your search for you. If you are awoken and perchance have the answer he seeks, please do not keep your secrets from him. Your life depends on it. EAZ Cat Statue In the original Solstice of Heroes EAZ space, players could enter an out-of-bounds area and would be able to discover a cat statue. This statue is identical to the ones that can be seen on the Dreaming City, that were connected to different secrets and triumphs. Players initially thought that this could be connected to the 15th Wish, but as it was found out of bounds, it probably was not. Needle Ship Origins The Books of Sorrow describe the Needle Ship, a vessel used by the Krill Sisters that later became the Three Hive Gods, Oryx, Savathun, and Zivu Wrath. There was an apparent abomination born upon the ship, from a chrysalis. In a reddit post, user slash scooby dz theorizes that the creature born on the needle ship could have been in Ahamkara, the wish dragons that inhabited the Destiny universe. The user also theorizes that the chrysalis was sent to Fundament and other regions of the known universe eons ago, containing more unborn Ahamkaras by some advanced civilization. They also boldly suggest that the worms that are the gods of the hive could be Ahamkara, but I feel like that this theory has lost credibility over time. Where the needle ship actually comes from, we may never know. Where is Praetith? Praetith was a member of the first fire team that entered the Vault of Glass. He was among other notable guardians like Kabar and Pahanan. Praetith was the owner of the weapons like Praetith's Timepiece and Praetith's Revenge. The Warlock was trapped inside the vault, and we don't know where they are inside. Much like Saint-14, Praetith has been locked away for a very long amount of time, as time progresses much slower in the vault, meaning that while an hour may pass outside, only a few minutes may pass inside the vault, and Praetith has been lost for centuries in the Destiny timeline. I think it's likely that we will know something more about Praetith in Season 14 as Vault of Glass returns. Fundament Leviathan The Leviathan is a creature mentioned in the Books of Sorrow. We don't know much about it, but we do know that it was a titanic creature swimming in the depths of Fundament that the Krill sisters encountered while traveling to the deep. It served the sky, or the Traveler as we know it. Golden Cyclops On Mercury, you could use an out-of-bounds glitch to explore what was beneath the patrol area. While exploring, you could find a golden cyclops hidden below the ground. This cyclops attacks the player, and is the only cyclops to look this way. A unique detail that seems to have no deeper meaning lore-wise or story-wise. Vogue Reflections While I couldn't find anything that was directly connected to the Vault of Glass, I did come across this really interesting out-of-bounds glitch on Europa, in the Concealed Void Lost Sector. You can exit the map using a glitch and explore beneath the geometry. I'll show you the gameplay on screen. In the clip, you can see that there is a strained mirror slash window that clearly shows Venus from Destiny 1. This leads me to believe that with Vault of Glass returning in Season 14, there will be some kind of portal 
that leads to a small part of Venus or into the vault directly, as it doesn't sound like Bungie is bringing back the old Venus back in its entirety in one season. Venus Wyverns Back in Destiny 1, if you went on Venus and looked up in the sky, you'd be able to see a large flying creature in the skybox. Much like the rock on the Cosmodrome, these dragon-like creatures were never able to be fought in-game. For a long time, people theorized that these wyverns may be the mythical Ahamkara, but after Last Wish and Riven, it seems that these theories have relatively died down. Pacifist Colony There is a pacifist colony located in the Kuiper Belt, where guardians have migrated due to their disillusionment with the city, the light, or the wars they have fought to preserve humanity. One of these guardians was Lady Aphrodite, who after witnessing the deaths of all but one of the other original Iron Lords, joined this group of light bearers in deep space. The status of the colony is uncertain though, as since Rise of Iron and the Red War, where Aphrodite had come and gone from the colony and the Iron Temple, the Darkness ships have arrived and engulfed much of the space surrounding Sol, which likely included the Kuiper Belt. The colony is very likely gone. Arcology Cameras In the Arboretum on Titan, a player discovered some odd cameras that track their guardians every move. As far as we know, these cameras weren't still being monitored or used, but nonetheless, the idea that someone or something is watching us as we travel through the eerie depths of the Arcology is certainly unnerving. Scrapped Pre-Alpha Storyline In a Kotaku article from 2015, Jason Schreier exposes the rocky creation of Destiny, the original story being brutally gutted less than a full year before the public beta released. Most people know there was a different story, so that doesn't make this entry all too obscure, but what does make this entry obscure is the details. I'll link the article in the description for you to read for yourself, but to summarize some key details, Crow was a main character but not as the Guardian we see today or even Aldrin from the past. Rasputin was a character in the form of an Exo seen in concept art. The final third of the game was about rescuing Rasputin from the Dreadnought, which we see in the Taken King. Destiny's first raid was originally a gigantic clash of the Crota's End and King's Fall raids, and Vault of Glass was created in a very short amount of time as to have a raid that fit the theme of the Vex, who were inadvertently made the final boss of the vanilla Destiny campaign and Osiris featured as a hermetic character located in the lighthouse on Mercury. Much of this can be seen in Vidox from before Destiny's launch. There will always be that question of what the game would have been like if it launched with this original story and game design that was lost to corporate intervention. 1 AU Secret Room In the Red War campaign, there's a mission set on the Almighty called 1 AU, where you could find enemies hidden in secret rooms. Initially, some believed that upon this mission becoming replayable through Ikora Ray meditations, we would be able to trigger a quest to activate. Sadly, this was a dead end, and we never saw anything come out of the discovery. Consult the Archives I believe this is in reference to the Consult the Archives emote from Destiny 2 Season of Opulence, and how it was tied to a Grimoire Anthology book called Grimoire Anthology Volume 2 Fallen Kingdoms as well as having very unique symbols that circled around the player during the animation. I don't know if there's any kind of huge discovery that came with the symbols, but I couldn't find any deeper meaning in this entry. Aldrin Resurrection Location In-Game User slash Stallions was able to locate what seems to be the unfinished area where Aldrin was revived by his ghost Glint becoming Crow. These are just two of the screenshots, and it seems like maybe at some point we were going to be able to go to where he was laid to rest. Rise of Iron Limbo This entry seems to be suggesting that the continuity of Rise of Iron is in Limbo. For example, none of the SIVA damage on the Cosmodrome in Destiny 1 is visible on the Cosmodrome in Destiny 2. Also, characters like Shiro 4 and Axis hardly come up in canon, leading some to think that Bungie has written Rise of Iron out of canon entirely, but this just isn't the case. We see many examples in-game that show the effect of the events in Rise of Iron, such as Outbreak Perfected, the various SIVA ornaments, and Phylax calling veteran players the Young Wolf. As for Shiro, he is occasionally seen in lore tabs. The repaired features from the Cosmodrome are just likely a bungee oversight, as they probably prioritize getting the location out on time for Beyond Light after just porting the original assets from Destiny 1 vanilla. So that was the bottom of the iceberg. I'd say it was a pretty solid tier. Just as a quick note, by this point I'm using the Iceberg by Lemons Are Just Lemons as my primary source. 
Unfortunately, the other icebergs were hitting the point where almost everything was either ironic or something that was made up for intrigue or shock value. The bottom of the iceberg was the fifth tier out of six total tiers, so that means we are now onto our final level, the Abyss. Dr. Crispy 93 Dr. Crispy 93 was a guardian that was shown in the Dark Below trailer from 2014. He is also reportedly voiced by none other than Pete Davidson. More than just knowing his mere existence though, we may actually know of Dr. Crispy's dark fate in canon. If you watch the Red War cutscenes that show us the console of the Red Legion, you can see that he has a very unique helmet on his necklace, worn as a trophy. This is the ATS-8 Arachnid Exotic Helmet from Destiny 1, and it is also the helmet worn by Dr. Crispy 93. Dr. Crispy 93 was the only character to ever be seen wearing this helmet, meaning he very well may have died by the hand of the Consul himself, perhaps in a failed assassination attempt during the assault on the city by the Red Legion. Wet Earth Monsters In the Black Armory Papers lore book, we learn of the collapse and how it lasted for a long time, like an apocalypse, all told from the perspective of Henriette, Ada One's mother. Most interestingly though, in entry 71 of the papers, Henriette describes an attack by what seems to be a servant of the darkness. According to Henriette, it makes the sounds of metal being warped, pushed and pulled into screams. She also says it smelled like wet earth, leading to the association of it with this old concept art from Destiny 1, which is heavily associated with the darkness by the community. Quantum Poles Quantum Poles are a tool seemingly used by Bungie to map the player's position on the location the player is currently on. Raid Secrets members discovered this by using a glitch involving the Gladiator's Blade Rush finisher that would separate their location on the map from their bodies. I will link their reddit post down below, because it goes further in depth than I ever could in a timely manner. Constellations Constellations is a lore book from Season of Dawn, obtained from the Sundial activity. The book seems to be written from the perspective of the first speaker, who describes the beginning of the City Age. It is very ethereal in nature, and I think that is why it has been placed so low on the iceberg by its creator. Lysander Lysander was the leader of the Concordat, a faction of the city similar to New Monarchy Dead Orbit in Future War Cult. Lysander was exiled from the city after him and his Concordat fought a battle against the other factions at the city in Bannerfall. The flags of the Concordat are still curiously hung in Bannerfall. Lysander's cry was a sparrow obtainable during Rise of Iron's SRL event, and it had lore attached to it that hinted Lysander was forming a coalition of guardians to oppose the vanguard and city. Mass Graves This is an entry I couldn't actually find anything about, but due to it being so low on the iceberg, I felt like I had to mention it because it seems so mysterious and fascinating. If anyone who potentially has more info on this could maybe leave a comment or a theory, I may include it in a follow-up video of some kind. Osiris Eye at the Cradle There is an eye of Osiris visible in a pool of shallow water at the cradle on Io, where the Tree of Silver Wings is planted. To explain what this means, I'll read what user slash funny haha skeleton man had to say about the seed. In Season of the Worthy, a lore book told us of an audience Brother Vance had with Mara Sov to explain that he made a breakthrough with info on the lighthouses. Mara, however, already knew this and told Vance to quit his research. She then went on to tell him to tell Osiris the next time Vance saw him to plant the seed. Osiris, upon hearing this, told Vance that he had done well. We can deduce that Osiris planted the seed of silver wings at the cradle and left the eye medallion as a calling card for Savathun or Eris to find. Aphelion The Aphelion is some kind of paracausal monster that has attacked the Awoken in deep space. Very little is known about them and we have never encountered one in-game, nor have we seen them. The Aphelion is what I would argue is the single most unnerving creature in the Destiny universe, and the reason is the mystery around it and the descriptions given by the Awoken Techians, two of which are as follows. The Techians you see here died while they were entranced together. Sometimes, when you are in communion, you cannot see what is coming in close, like the Aphelion. First it shimmered, then it crawled, then it screamed. These three Techians were victim to the Aphelion. I pray you never see it, my friend, because no matter what gods you have killed, 
you will not survive it. The idea that the Aphelion are not just unkillable by the Techians, who have been shown to have immense strength, but they claim that no matter what gods we have killed, we will not survive the Aphelion. Shadow Creatures On an expedition to a strange icy planet, the Drifter encountered a malevolent creature, a black gooey monster without a head that haunted his crew. It was said that multiple of them followed the Drifter's group, and when some of them froze to death, they were not able to be brought back due to the creature's light-suppressing presence. I believe that these things may be what is visible behind the Drifter on the Derelict before Gambit Games. Morse Code I'm not entirely sure which instance of Morse Code this entry is referring to, as there have been multiple instances of the code being used throughout Destiny's lifespan. The most notable one I can find is from the Destiny 2 location, The Farm, where a computer was transmitting IOM4. I think the mystery behind this Morse code eventually wrapped up with Arecibo, an adventure on Io that hinted at Rasputin's appearance on Mars in the Hellos Basin. IO is Io, and M4 could mean Mission 4 or Arecibo, although Io only had two story missions and Arecibo was an adventure. K1 Artifact the K-1 artifact is an artifact of the darkness that was discovered by the K-1 team on the moon. It was a Chinese aerospace team that worked during the Golden Age to uncover the secrets of Luna and they eventually discovered what was dubbed the K-1 artifact. The team, while studying the artifact, was haunted by insomnia, nightmares, physical manifestations of darkness, which were not dissimilar from the nightmares that Eris is haunted by in Shadowkeep, as well as bouts of psychosis. They all hear different voices speaking to them as well, and rigid and brief shifts of research are made to reduce the stress on the scientists and keep them sane. Eventually, it is discovered that the K-1 artifact was a transponder of some kind, and it was sending a signal out in deep space. This finding caught the attention of Clovis Bray, who was also using a darkness artifact in his research, the Clarity Statue visible in the Deep Stone Crypt. Clovis listened to the artifact instead of just studying it, and it guided him to create a Vex portal leading to a Forge world. Believing the K-1 team to have criminally misunderstood their artifact, Clovis Bray took over control of the K-1 artifact, dubbed it the Anomaly, and had it locked away on the moon. Despite this, it was likely already too late to stop what was coming. It is reasonable to believe that the signal being transmitted from the Anomaly was a distress call, or even a rallying call, to the darkness itself. In response to this call, the Black Fleet arrived and caused the collapse. During the collapse, the K-1 team was killed, and their deaths are detailed in the Downfall lore entry from Shadowkeep. K-1 Dig Site 3, System Core, Threat Detect Level 1, 3, 6, 10, Extinction Event, Confirmed Exotic, Psychosis, Protocol in Compliance, Threat Response, Error. Damage Assessment, Barricade Holding, Firewall, Firewall let us in. Damage Assessment, Barricade Holding, Firewall, there's things out here, they're killing everyone, open the door you damned machine. Threat Assessment Assessed, Result Quota Exceeded, Damage Assessment, Site 3, Barricade Holding, Stop, Stop, they'll hear us, Shh. Quiet. Firewall, we made a mistake, yeah, we're sorry, just let- What was that? Just let us in. If you let us in the vault, we might be able to hold out. Threat assessment assessed. Result quota exceeded. AI com firewall negative. Shh. Firewall lower your volume. AI com firewall negative. Survival impossible. Shh. Impossible. What does it mean? Impossible. AI com firewall no rescue. Shh. AI com firewall no escape. Shh. Quiet. AI com firewall no sustenance. Stop. Just stop. Shh. AI com firewall psychological dangers include but are not limited to. They're coming. AI com firewall known psychosis, recent psychological trauma, and existential collapse. They're almost here. We gotta go. Existential collapse? What does it mean? No time. Come on. AI com firewall the end of all things. Distant screaming. The anomaly is now locked inside the crucible map of the same name, inside the prism at the center of the map. Strange leitmotif. This entry is very interesting, and to sum it up, in music theory, a leitmotif is a pattern of notes and rhythms that are used as an auditory cue for a theme, character, or location. 
There are two main leitmotifs in Destiny. The first appears in multiple places in D2, but most notably in the track Journey. The second appears as a part of multiple songs in the Destiny soundtrack, with Bow to No One in The Taken King and Queen's Oracle in Forsaken as the two main appearances. As Reddit user Megamo93 points out, these leitmotifs are used to indicate triumphs in our Guardian's journey. Bow to No One is played as we unlock the newest subclass in The Taken King, Journey is played when we escape the city and reclaim our light, and Queen's Oracle plays as we are ordered by Marasov to kill Riven in the Last Wish raid. This entry touts it as strange, and maybe there is another leitmotif other than these ones, such as the one for the darkness that plays during moments involving the pyramids, but I personally don't think that's what it was referencing. Nezarak Nezarak is a malevolent deity in the Destiny universe, and is often described as the final form of death. According to the Drifter, the fourth tomb of Nezarak lay out in the Jovians, meaning someone built a memorial to Nezarak, likely during the Golden Age. Since the text of Hated Nezarak, a kind of holy scripture it would seem, was written pre-Golden Age, Nezarak has been a figure in humanity for centuries, and due to the tomb being located in the Jovians, it is unlikely that pre-Golden Age humanity created it. I believe that Nezarak is a form of the darkness that some people may have encountered prior to the arrival of the Traveler, and as more darkness artifacts such as Clarity Control on Europa and the K1 artifact on the moon were uncovered, something such as a Tomb of the Darkness or Nezarak was found out by Jupiter. I saw what happened. Most of the lore focus entries near the bottom are finished, so now we have more that deal with creepy easter eggs within the game and outside conspiracies. This entry is in reference to the odd detail heard in a video via user slash mp slowly on reddit. In this clip, you can faintly hear a voice saying I saw what happened. This finding was confirmed to be an actual feature in game, as other people could also hear the voice while wearing Reverie Dawn armor. This is a small easter egg but a pretty creepy one all the same. Datamind Crying Audio Back in June of 2020, Reddit user Relic Terra was datamining audio when he found an audio file that is a little unsettling to say the least. The audio is the prolonged sounds of a woman crying. I personally don't really find it scary or anything, just a little unnerving, but some people on the thread say it really spooked them, so if you don't want to hear it, skip ahead about 35 seconds. Anyway, here it is. <laughs> So yeah, definitely a little spooky. The audio has yet to be directly linked to any action in-game, so this likely doesn't have much to do with the actual story or gameplay, but is just some extra audio Bungie record in case they ever need someone heaving and weeping. Either way, this is a truly obscure detail that I'm sure a lot of people haven't heard of before. Exclamation point letting go. Letting go was a video created by a YouTube channel called JoyU7. The video was posted back in 2011, about three years before the launch of Destiny. I'll play the video now.
People initially believed this to be some elaborate ARG made by Bungie, but in reality, it was a fan-made creation. It is a really cool deep dive into early Destiny history though. Joy use. This is quite possibly the deepest dive on this list, and fittingly so, as it's our last entry. Towards the beginning of Destiny's lifespan, when only very basic information about the game was known, there was a theory that circulated online, and more specifically on a thread that is now known as the Joy use thread. In Bungie's game called Marathon that predated even Halo Combat Evolved, the main character wields an AI called Durandal. The story of this character has similarities with that of Count Roland, a Frankish military commander from the 8th century Europe. He used a sword called Durandal, which ties him directly to Marathon. After Marathon, we got Halo, with Master Chief and Cortana. Similarly to Count Roland, there was a figure in Danish folklore called Ogier the Dane, who wielded a sword called Cortana. Master Chief has an AI called Cortana, which then links the two games through both their connections to folklore. Ogier the Dane's son was killed by Charlemagne, the king whom Count Roland served. Now, I'm sure you're wondering what all this has to do with Destiny, and that's where the Joy Use thread comes in. The thread compiles this information and poses the theory that all Bungie's IPs connect to this ancient European folklore. When Destiny was revealed, the developers mentioned the name Charlemagne, and how the player will rescue them. This led to the thread posing the question that if Charlemagne is going to be some kind of protagonist in Destiny, where is their weapon? The sword of Charlemagne was called Joyuse, and the theory goes that in Destiny, the player would eventually claim an AI called Joyuse, or some slightly changed name that resembles it. We now know that there was no Joyuse in Destiny, and there was no Charlemagne in the story. Despite the dead end that this theory leads to, I don't think Bungie would bother including parallels to these myths in their previous games, hint at a similar connection in Destiny, and then never add it. While I don't want to speculate too much, I believe that Joyuse did exist at one point, but after rewrites of Destiny in 2012, it was lost to the past, and much like many of the elements from that early story, we will never see what could have been. Wow. That was quite a lot of material. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the deep mysteries, easter eggs, and unnerving lore of the Destiny universe. Making this video has been a goal of mine since I first read the Destiny Iceberg by Inflatable Waffle back in about September of last year, and I'm so happy to have it done and out into the world. I'll have my links to my many, many, many sources in the description. Again, thank you for watching. I'm Not Harv, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.